Uh, now, I would like just to introduce our first speaker. Uh, he is Francesc. He is a very well-known uh, person here. Uh, he is, he's working for the World Health Organization and also for the Universidad Oberta de Catalunya. And he will also show us about uh, what is the framework on the telemedicine project. It means how we can develop our own telemedicine project, what we have to look. Uh, many times we would like to do some stuff. We have so many good ideas, but we don't know how to develop. So now we have here Frances, which will help us to learn and teach us how we can do it. Welcome, Frances. It's okay, yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Anne, for your kind words. And thank you for letting me the opportunity to be here. So, and yesterday I have new friends of Spain, and I hope um, today make new friends from Denmark. Uh, it's important to be here and to share experience. Um, well, let me know who. Okay, this is the order of my presentation. First of all, I will talk about what we do and where I come from. And then I thought that it could be interesting to show you some uh, um, research we are doing in the field of, of D7. And finally, I will present you the uh, famous framework for the implementation of telemedicine services. First of all, I come from the Open University of Catalonia. It's an online university uh, which was created in 1996 and its academic activity are carried out uh, via the internet. So here you can find some figures that we are currently managing. It's not important, but just to show you. My faculty of health sciences is, is, is uh, um, well, was established in 2010. So it has nine years old, it's very young. And I like only um, to highlight the aspects of our activity. Uh, first of all, we have been training in telemedicine uh, for more than 10 years. The importance of this training activity is shown by our students that, uh, as Hans, you can see one of our best students we have, that they have been carrying out uh, some important activities in the telemedicine field in their country or uh, in their, uh, their healthcare institutions. One of these examples is you can show in this report here that allows Colombia to uh, carry out uh, service telemedicine. Second, we have launched two networks with several universities and other institutions and governments in South America. Uh, one of them related to telemedicine is the CQD1 and the other related to mobile health. And finally, thanks to our collaboration with World Health Organization, in 2018, we were named as a WHO Collaborating Center in eHealth. And during this uh, collaboration with them, we have developed some reports. Uh, one of them is the framework that I will tell you a bit later. About our line, research lines, here you can find what we try to do in depending on the roles we have as a who collaborating center, as a head of the Rhythmus, sorry, Rhythmus network, and in the our research group of, of faculty. I'd like now to highlight uh, the, the last research lines, as I said, because I think it's important to share experiences related to the, the aim of this, this event. So first of all, here you can find a study um, that tries to analyze the determinants of the intention to use telemedicine by medical staff at a healthcare institution. The healthcare institution was a network of primary care centers and, re and a reference hospital in the north of Barcelona, Spain. Here it's important to see, to see uh, what motivates the general practitioner to use telemedicine at least in that healthcare institutions. As uh, according to that study, uh, the, what mo um, basically there are uh, several aspects you can see here. And on the, one, on the one hand, 
when they when it gives them the opportunity to be more efficient in their work and as well um, to work safely and confidential on the one hand and on the other the previous uh, opinion of medical staff and patients about telemedicine and ICT with your profile could act as a driver of telemedicine use in the healthcare institution. To introduce deeper into drivers of telemedicine uh, used by general practitioners, let me show the follow studies. The first one, as you know, the current reality of primary care makes it essential to have uh, telemedicine systems uh, available to facilitate the communication between care levels. In that context, we have developed a community of clinical practice in order to solve the information and communication problems of healthcare professionals in a much simpler way, and as well to build knowledge between them, and um, finally, an option of continual medical education. Well, in this study you can find here, we postulate that the use of a web 2.0 uh, platform for communication between primary and hospital care could improve the performance of care practice. Well, we established that the professional, user, professional social network use and the information and communication technology use and the uh, amount of contact hours with patients could explain the intensity of such platform use. And in addition, the intensity of that such platform use improve care practice, leading to an improvement of, prim of uh, primary care and fewer hospital referrals. So the result of our study shows that the position that professionals have within the healthcare structure, and particularly the closer healthcare professionals' activity is to patient and their experience of using social network and uh, as well ICT, are crucial to explaining the use of such platforms. And finally, in this study, try to analyze the discriminant factors that have an influence on the use of community of clinical practice by primary and uh, specialist healthcare professionals, I mean uh, physicians and nurses, for information sharing. Again, here it's important to see the difference between uh, what drivers used to well, what is the difference of the driver's use of telemedicine according to if they are physicians, you can see here with um, uh, dark blue, or nurses, uh, light blue, okay? Well, that, that I can try to explain in that short time is some studies that we are doing in your field in order to improve the use of ICT technologies like telemedicine or other, community, or other technologies like community of clinical practice and and the, to understand the importance that what the physicians um, um, think and feel about this kind of technologies, it's important because according to that, they will motivate them to use that technology or not. Well, following with the presentation, we being a collaborating health center, we have developed, as I said, some reports. One of the last one is uh, in order to put uh, order with the new generation of apps, uh, um, mobile apps, and it is about to be published, okay? Okay. In, in order to provide uh, solutions for the successful implementation for the telemedicine service, in health services, the WHO asked us to develop an implementation framework, as you can see here, uh, that f could serve as a guide for the widespread implementation in any health services. And that's what I'm going to focus in the next part of my talk, when I shall try to describe briefly what this implementation framework is. It is based on understanding of the context and as well as the challenges and opportunities that exist within it. As we know, many different factors are involved in any implementation of telemedicine services. Some uh, of them may act as a barriers and others as a facilitators. 
And depending on how we handle them, they may help to achieve a successful implementation. The model, as you, know, you can see here, has a three initial base layers of, of planning, that is strategy, organization, and public policy. Then comes the development uh, phase of the telemedicine services. And finally, we have the monitoring, evaluation, and optimization phase, where the outcomes of the implementation services are presented. Well, if we look briefly at each uh, layer of the model and starting at the bottom, the first layer we have is the strategy. Well, uh, to understand the importance of this layer, layer, we must be very clear that the design of any telemedicine activity activity uh, or services require an uh, analysis of the context within which it is going to be implemented in order to define which telemedicine activity offers the best benefit. It detailed analysis is crucial to better understanding of the needs and conditions as well as the resources we have, okay? Well, to understand the importance of this layer, we have a problem within a context with some resources. And in this, within this scenario, and important with the resources we have, we have to find a, a solution. Well, the analysis and prioritization, prioritization of the world data collected must be uh, perform according to the following criteria, potential cost and proportion of population affected, complexity of its implementation, available necessary infrastructure, financing, legal, ethical, and other aspects, even subject criteria. And this classification can go from very feasible to impossible. And important as well, he will perform this analysis will be the time of advisors, constituted by local stakeholders, because they know um, um, the local conditions then where the uh, telemedicine will be implemented. And constituted as well with governments, poli pol political stakeholders, agents in the public and private sector, and science experts that could be national and international as well. Well, the second level of the model is the organizational level, which takes into account and the whole aspects of the model directly associated with the organization. Here, it's important, first of all, to have a leadership. It's key. And he or she must be clear, identifiable, and proactive. And some studies say that this leadership must be physician, because only uh, can be the communication between other physician the leader must be physician, not technological. It's a problem that we have to take into account. Second, it's important as well to make health professionals who will use the new telemedicine services as a co-participant in the telemedicine project. That means that they must perceive the project as their own. Okay. Third, it's important as well to establish uh, mechanism incentives to combat fear and resistance, and as well to upgrade individual competencies. That, um, as, as well important to uh, prepare and implement a, a business plan, and it must include initial financing, and it's important as well as the sustainability of the project, okay? And in this sense, it's important to establish a collaboration with uh, in relation with other institutions, like healthcare institutions and other technological institutions and governments, um, in order to think big, no? to, to share resources and to share needs, and etc. And finally, in this uh, layer, we shall deal with the human factor called resistance to, to change. Okay, defined as the resistance to use the new services. In this sense, it's important to establish emotional connection between the new user to new, to new services. And that is to say a sense of belonging. It is very important because it's the real barrier that we have 
when we, we try to implement a new telemedicine services. Okay, and that means we must speak with them, convince them, and listen what they want to, we should take into account in the new services project, etc. Then we have the last layer of this initial planning basic, that is public policy. It refers to the planning, management, and communication of the new services within public health services. This layer is very important because it must develop every, every action that helps to break down the barriers that prevent its implementation, as well those actions that facilitate it. Okay, that's it, a public policy. In this layer, we must, we should take into account the world considerations that uh, we had in the first layer strategy, strategy, okay, the first layer that is the strategy. In addition, we should take another actions that, for example, establishment of legislative and regulatory framework. We should include the new telemedicine service in the service of portfolio, and it is not, happens in the real scenario, at least in Spain. Uh, Great uh, efficiency should be reflected in the remuneration of the staff. That is an incentive mechanism. The cost will be extended to other sectors, and we should consider essential aspects of training, communication, and dissemination. Then we have the development of telemedicine service that takes into account the whole aspects into the healthcare institution that explain the use of telemedicine services. Here we have legal and regulatory aspects, technology and infrastructure aspects, human resources and funding. So, uh, regarding to legal and regulatory aspects, uh, it refers to the data protection, privacy and confidentiality of the data, and regulatory aspects related to the data responsibility. Regarding to te technological and infrastructure aspects, it refers to the interoperability aspects or ability to share data and to facilitate data and knowledge exchanges, and other uh, aspects like usability, etc. Regarding human resources, it refers to the whole aspect related to health and telemedicine, telemedicine that could interfere in their daily clinical practice, for example, the relationship between healthcare professionals, the new role they have to take in front of a new patient of or training plans with the all skills and knowledge required for a new services, including ethical, technical, healthcare, and communication aspects. And finally, regarding funding aspects, it is important here to determine the evidence of telemed telemedicine efficiency to help public authorities take the appropriate decision on use and allocation of the resources as well as important to perform a rigorous analysis of cost and budget control to ensure the viability of continuity of the project and uh, mechanisms to include the, the that helps to include the reimbursement mechanisms and incentives. And finally, and I go very quickly, sorry, <laughs> we have the implementation and optimization phase that uh, the outcomes of the implementation services um, are presented. Here, not only a final evaluation of the project will be taken into account, uh, but also a continuous revaluation. That is, the project will be evaluated in its design and development and monitoring steps and let um, um, will let us the opportunity to adjust the operation of the services and subsequent evaluation. Well, I know that try to explain the world framework in the time I had or I have, it's difficult because the framework is extensive in content. And I try to highlight the more important aspects of this implementation framework, but I know 
it's uh, well it's you should read it because uh, my talk has has been short definitely but nevertheless i found a video that explained that i did what uh, the idea i would like to 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 to, to tell you and the idea is you will find here in this video two uh, scenarios the first one is what happens when the healthcare organization introduce a technology in their organization. Take a view of but the Holland changes organizational. Stop. Time to refuel and, and change tires. How many people are working with this more car? Changes the tire. And how many people are watching Only four crew members, while the rest the of the people are working? Are allowed to work on the car. Okay. It's how many wheels time. we have and only one person Holland is changing each one? Anxious to get away. Okay. And That's you can why. hear the rest of the cars is passing. So sure. It, this car will not win the race. Okay. What we would like to extend to you with this implementation framework, if we, if we want to take the whole advantages of using ICT in a healthcare organization, it's very important to change the organization, the, 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 the whole organization, in order to improve the most advantages of this using. So. This is real, you know, 1950. The tires are changed at last. A crewman polishes the windshield as Holland moves away just 67 seconds after he stops. Okay, and now we are going to be, to see what happens when our organization takes the whole aspects in the implementation framework that we talk. That is the whole challenge we did. And please, from the time that we need to change the, the wall wheels and the pool. Very easy. You need to... <laughs> I think this video explained that better than the, I did what I tried to talk. Okay. Now it's time for questions. Thank you very much. And go ahead with if you have any questions. Thank you. In Spanish as well as you need to, you want. Oh, uh, This is not a pro project uh, in an essential way. It's a, in a, a guide. The, the idea of this framework is to help the countries, especially South America countries, uh, to, to guide for the, uh, each implementation services in their country and the, in their healthcare institutions. Um, you must take into account that the uh, World Health Organization asked us to develop this guide. The idea is not the Open University of Catalonia say that, because we are nothing in the world, in the sciences, we, we are an online university, very young and blah, blah, blah. But if the World Health Organization who said that, because the framework is there, is, the, is, is, is from World Health, no, it's not, not us. So, the idea is that who will extend this framework or has extended this framework to them and help them to develop uh, the telemedicine services. And they need to find resources, but as I said, uh, every implementation service is according to the resources they have. So the idea is not to um, make, uh, to need money to make new telemedicine services, but to take advantages of the resources they have to develop new telemedicine services. We don't need an important infrastructure. We need to use the infrastructure we have in the most better way, that is. And the idea is, like Hans explained me, to extend the framework to the world. And I would like to assist if the framework and really, uh, really is, is good or not, what we need, and make assessment about that. Okay. Sorry. 
Well, this is the microphone. Does the, the, the project work out in Catalonia? This is not a project of Catalonia, it's a project of the world. Yes, but this is in the, in the page of the... Tele, telemedicina. Yes. Uh, uh, this project uh, uh, work, uh, work, works out in, in Catalonia. Works out? Funciona. Yes, well, it's according to our experience of uh, more than 10 years teaching telemedicine and researching about telemedicine, we developed this framework according to what we thought that it needs to be implemented. So uh, it's according to the experiences we have um, and uh, our students has uh, uh, reported to us about telemedicine. It's uh, in, a view, in a global view, not Catalonia, ni Barcelona, ni, ni, ni. it's in a global view. It's a world framework of telemedicine services. Worldwide, yes. Uh, the project is uh, extend to countries. In yes, the, through World Health, world. world Health Organization, Auto. not from us, okay. because because it's not for no framework. It's the framework of World Health Organization. It you can find the address of internet. You if you look in Google the framework of telemedicine services, you will find in the page of World Health Organization. Not from the Open University of Catalonia and the World Health, who collaborate in certain in the health of, of university. No, 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 it's from... Uh, well, uh, we are the, the authors of this framework. Uh, uh, I, I would like just to say something. Yes. Just a second. What, what Francis is, is, talk, uh, is talking about, it is not exactly a project. Exactly. It is like a manual. It is something uh, that we can use to see or to learn how to start working with telemedicine. And it was not done especially in Spain or in Europe. It is to be applied in the world. It is a way so we can learn how to start making some kind of telemedicine project. It, it is only like that. It is not exactly a project. It is like, a, 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 we can say, a manual how to do it. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I think it's very interesting. I'm Carl Brandt, coming from the research unit here, General Patches in Denmark and, and the Digital Health uh, uh, Center. And, and what I'm seeing is that um, there's a lot of similarities to the problems that you're having, that we have seen both in Denmark and England and Sweden and other places. Um, and uh, I was at a conference uh, yesterday discussing trying to make a digital index on how far is a country in in developing and using telemedicine in general practice. Because there's no doubt that there's a lot of wins. We can really be much more efficient, like you are showing, if we do things right, just, just doing things which we have a tendency to do. And I was wondering, these steps that you have described, have you thought about a scale monitoring how far is a country on each step, or how far is a digital implementation on each step, because one of the challenges we're having right now is very much the remuneration structure. In the sense, we have, had this, we have the strategy, we have the organization, we have the collaboration between different organizational parts, hospitals, primary care, very, very well established. Uh, and we're getting now to the next level, the political level, on looking at remuneration models, trying to uh, establish uh, the motivation <laughs> For the clinicians, um, and um, uh, and I think if you look at every country, you will see different places on that in that manual that you're describing, and probably also in each telemedic implementation um, that you will see different frameworks. But have you thought about a scale, or maybe that could be a next step? What's your thoughts about that? Could that be a next step of your framework to maybe try to make scales on these different levels in your framework? Yes. Thank you for your question. It's very interesting and very important as well to, because this is the first step we could do more. And we would like to, 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 to extend the, the possibilities of this framework. The first of all, it's important uh, to assess if it works or not. 
and to establish, as you said, as well as a schedule and with, in order to check you, I did that or uh, not, and to assess if but this- But also like a scale, like, you know, one to 10, how far are we? Exactly. Are we on a level five or level seven or level 10? Yes, but uh, we need resources to assess what is the uh, level of technology available in each country, you know, if uh, we are, uh, well, we, we are doing that, in fact, in South America. In, in mobile health, mobile health uh, technologies. The idea here is to take an advantage is the real use of this technology, the mobile, mobile technology, very ex uh, extended in South America, people and other physicians and nurses as well, in order to make new possibilities of use this technology already implemented in, in terms of health. And Europe, we would like to do that. We have a, at least assessed the real use of ICT by physicians, uh, one of healthcare professionals, in fact, and patients as well. But we don't know which level of resources each country have. And OK, we need that, but we need resources to assess that. And we are trying to, but, but and now we are um, searching for resources. And as I said, it's very important because, as I said, every implemented, implementing process is depending on the context and the resources they have. So this information is very important because, Max, you are here, and according to where you are, you can do this kind of possibilities in telemedicine services. OK. And also applying it to a specific, uh, like also the other, you were saying at the other tip, applying on a specific area yes. will make the framework very interesting for others to adopt. Yes. If you can say we used it in this uh, implementation with these levels. Yes, but and what you say we have recollected, at least in the first strategy layer. In the strategy we find that it's important to assess the, the, the context, to the, the study in which context you are, what is the need you, 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 you have, and according to that information, you must develop these kind of possibilities. Okay, uh, this the um, I mean it's uh, a part of the project. Every project must know which resources have, and if you want to implement it, that in the country level. Obviously, this is a, a, a task of a level of policy, but if not, at least at healthcare institution level. Okay. More questions. No? Okay. Thank you. And well, I'm here if you have want to talk later. Thank you.